Is Lemon the weirdest movie of 2017? Absolutely, maybe of all time. Is there a brilliance hidden behind all that weirdness? Absolutely. So you know that weird person at the party that makes everyone uncomfortable, no one's quite sure how they got there, but there they are? Well that guy finally got his own movie. Some people may compare Lemon to watching someone go to the bathroom for an hour and a half and say look, not every human activity deserves to be on film, just like not every sad, pathetic type of person deserves to have a whole movie made about them. So Lemon is slang for a dud car, and Isaac, our protagonist, is a dud human being, and this movie takes us into the awfulness that is his life, and then just sits there. And it's uncomfortable, like getting a lemon squirted in your eyes uncomfortable. The movie opens with Isaac pissing his pants, and that's really symbolic of just what a man-child he is. He may be tall and have a beard, but emotionally, he's just an infant. He's a small-time theater teacher, and he picks plays where he can berate the female lead and say all the things he really wants to say to his wife, but can't. He's acting in commercials for horrible diseases because he'd rather be the face of Hep C than admit he's failed as an actor, and his agent keeps calling him up all enthusiastic, Isaac, they love your look. And it's funny because they love your look means you look like absolute <laughs> The photographer in one of the commercials says to him, you're thinking too much about how you see your face and not enough of how other people see your face. And it's such a great line because that's really his problem. He's so narcissistic and wrapped up in his own little drama that he never stopped to consider how other people are actually perceiving him. He's this horrible mixture of completely inept and unjustifiably smug. So many movies glamorize dysfunctional men, Sheldon Cooper, Napoleon Dynamite. This movie just shows you the horrible reality of some of these men's lives with brutal, brutal honesty. The movie starts with this woman from Africa recounting these traumas she's experienced in her war-torn country. And there's two ways to interpret this. One is that Isaac's suffering, while different, is just as painful as hers because at least she has a family, friends, real human connections. Isaac doesn't have any of that. The second interpretation is, just in case you ever start to feel bad for Isaac and what he's going through, don't, because just remember how privileged he is relative to almost everyone else. And you have to give the movie credit for creating a compelling protagonist without doing anything to make him likable. There's just this morbid fascination. So Isaac's a mess, how did he get this way? We start to get an idea when we see his family at dinner. We have the overbearing Jewish patriarch, the clingy, needy mother, who's actually Carla from Cheers, his overachieving sister, just obnoxious brother, even the family therapist is there for some reason, whose own life is a complete mess, by the way. And we get such a contrast when we see him go to his Jamaican girlfriends for a barbecue, and everyone's together, and they're laughing, and it's just this warmth that we just don't see. Even everyone being together in a group talking at Isaac's, you only really saw two or three people at a time kind of sneak off and have these little conversations. So what's the point of the movie? What's it trying to say? I think it's trying to say that people like Isaac, who are white, male, came from money, even if they were awful people, it used to be they didn't have to change. They could just stay in their bubbles. Their wife would put up with their nonsense. Audiences would put up with their horrible plays and acting. But now, as things change and power shifts, they can't just do that anymore. His wife leaves him. He doesn't get jobs just because of who he knows. So he's left with two choices. He can either just retreat into these smaller and smaller bubbles, and you see this with him at his theater class, just berating these struggling actors, the only place he really has power, or he can try to change, and that involves going out and forming connections with real people of different races and different classes and you see the awkwardness and the struggle involved in that. So many times in this movie characters say something that works on two levels. Something the character would say and then something us as a viewer would say about the movie as a whole. Someone actually says at one point, this is hard to watch. Another character says, it's rather dark, I'd rather not repeat it. Which is ironic because we've just been subjected to that thing as the viewer. There's this great quote, there's no life left on earth, 
the unhappy moon shines her light in vain. And it's so fitting because on this movie, there's no good characters. So whoever's shining a light on these characters isn't doing it proudly and showing beauty. It's doing it reluctantly, showing ugliness. Music is great in this movie. It really helps create that bizarre, weird vibe, but it never feels repetitive because all the different songs they use are so different, and yet they all contribute to that same vibe. Michael Cera was great. I finally saw him play a role different than what he usually does. And he's this struggling actor in the small time theater class. It's so ironic. At one point, a character actually asks him, how did you get here? I mean, you go from starring in Superbad to getting molested by a guy that looks like this. I'd give this movie a 10 out of 10 because one, it's completely original and that's so hard to do nowadays. A lot of people aren't even trying. Two, there's nothing I could really change because if you change stuff to make it funnier, yeah, it'd be funnier, but it'd be a different movie and it wouldn't be as good as communicating the message that it wants to. And three, I'll definitely watch it again. I think there's so many things going on that you might not pick up the first time you see it, but once you kind of understand what the movie's trying to say, you realize it was actually really brilliant. If you like my review, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click my face to subscribe. And if you leave a comment, I'll read it in a reply.